Okay, this is the first lesson out of Module 1, Integer Concepts. This is going to be Lesson 1, Identify and Interpret Integers. Make sure you do get your name on your paper if you haven't yet. Um, this is going to go right along with your notes, so make sure as we're going through this that you're filling in. Now, let's start off with our vocab words. We have four different ones. Positive numbers, which is a number greater than zero. Negative numbers. A number less than zero, and it's shown with the negative sign. Opposites. It's the same distance from zero, but on different sides of zero. So, like, three, the opposite of three is negative three. The opposite of negative three is three. And integers, the set of all numbers and their opposites. So, integers include three and negative 3, it includes 2 and negative 2. So it's going to have both sets of those. And then here's our number line. We have 0 in the middle, and 0 does not have um, the red of negative integers or the blue of positive integers because it's neither negative nor positive. Numbers on the left hand side of the number line are negatives. Numbers on the right hand side of the number line are positives. Let's take a look down here at the bottom part of this. We're going to actually start doing a little bit of work. The result of three football plays are shown in the table. So, those of you that know football probably understand this a little bit better than those of you that don't. A four-yard gain means you go forward four yards. And so, the net yards is four. You got positive four. If you have a one-yard loss, that means you lose a yard lose a yard, so that's negative one. And a four yard loss is negative four because you go back four. And let's look at our first question. What does zero represent in this situation? Zero represents not going anywhere. You're going to stay exactly where you are. So, 0 represents no gain or loss. So, we're staying exactly where that ref put that football down. We're not gaining anything. We're not losing anything. The next question, what do negative numbers represent in this situation? If we look up here, we have two negative numbers. If we look over here, that says loss. So, that means what do they represent? Yards lost. And what do positive numbers represent then? If negative numbers represents yards lost, positive numbers represent yards gained. Down here, this is probably your favorite part. We get to complete the number line and then we're gonna graph these numbers up here, from up here on the number line. So we're gonna start on the positive side. I go zero, one, we have 2, 3, 4, 5. Then the opposite side, we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Now when it says to graph them, all we're going to do is take these three numbers right here, and we're going to put dots on the number line for them. So our first one is 4. So right here on 4 we're putting it. Not above 4, but right on the line. So we graph that one. Our next one is negative 1. So I'm going to find negative 1, put my dot right on it, and then we have negative 4, which is all the way over here. And that's it for that problem. Remember, anytime since this is a recording, you can stop it and go back and watch it again if you under don't understand it. You can pause it, so that way you can catch up with writing. Let's look at our next question. We're going to complete the number line, then graph number negative 2. So we're going to start by just writing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then over here, we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. So we did this part. Now we need to graph negative 2. So I'm going to take my pen. I'm going to put a mark on negative 2 right there. So I have it graphed. 
our next thing we're going to do is read the first question. And the first question says, we're going to graph the opposite of negative 2. And when I do this, I like to get different colors out so I can show you the difference. If you would like to do that with some sort of um, crayon, marker, highlighter, color pencil, you can do that. Even a pen. But remember, if you mark with those things, you're not really able to erase them. So be careful where you do that. The opposite of negative 2. So negative 2 is 1, 2 spots away from 0. If we go on the other side of 0, we go 2 spots away, and we get 2. So we're going to put negative 2 dot right there. So we graphed it, and we're going to explain how you use the number line to find the opposite. So 2 is the opposite of negative 2. Um, they're both two sides, not sides, I'm sorry, two spots away from zero. Both are two spots away from zero. Now let's look at this next section. The integer 3 is 3 units from zero on the number line. Which, which integer is also three units from zero on the number line? How is this integer related to the integer three? So which integer is also three units from zero? That would be negative three. Because if we look up, we have three is three spots away from zero. And then three spots away from zero over here is negative three. Let's answer our other question. How is this integer related to the integer three? So, negative 3 is the opposite of 3. Okay, one thing you do when you are writing your notes, make sure you write so you can actually read your handwriting. So when you go back later to use your notes on your test, or maybe to help you on your homework, you can read your own handwriting. So you know what's going on. Next question, how many units from zero is zero on the number line? So if we look at zero, there's only one zero up here if we look on the number line. And zero is zero spots from zero. What is the opposite of zero? Zero is its own opposite. And if you wanted to explain, you could say there are no other numbers that are zero units from zero, but I think we gotten that point down already. Okay, this down here, you probably, the first question is kind of tricky. So we just need to make sure that we're slowing down and comprehending what we're reading. What is the opposite of the opposite of five? Now, let's look at this first opposite. The opposite of five is negative 5. So we got that opposite down. But then the opposite of that turns it into 5. And this can be written, it's a little small there, I'm going to rewrite it, can be written that looks like this. This means the opposite of the opposite of 5. Now, when you have two negatives right here next to each other, they cancel out and they become positives. And that's how we get the 5 there. Okay, let's flip it over and look right up here in the box. Jessie is the student treasurer for the video game club. She records club expenses as negative numbers and deposits to the club account as positive numbers. So, um, expenses are negative, deposits are positive. 
And then she's going to, she graphed these on a number line, which she did already for us. We have two negative, meaning those are expensive, and one positive, which is the deposit. But Jesse did not label every tick mark. What is the distance between each tick mark on Jesse's number line? So we're not going one, two, three, four. That doesn't work because we get to eight. But we have two, four, six, eight. So we have two. So the distance between each of them is two. So two, four, six, eight, just like that. And then how would she show an expense of five on her graph? Well, since if we look up here, this would be negative two, negative four, negative six, negative five's not up on there because we are counting by twos. So we need to think when we're counting by twos, we need to get in between the two numbers possible for this odd number. And I know that five goes between four and six. And since it's negative, I'm going to be looking on the left-hand side. So this negative 5 is going to go right here in the middle between negative 4 and negative 6. So to write that out, we're going to say negative 5 goes halfway between negative 4 and negative 6. Okay, let's look down here on the left-hand side. The morning temperature in a large city in Minnesota was recorded each day for seven days. The temperatures recorded were, we have negative two, four, zero, two, negative four, negative seven, and negative 10. First, we're gonna graph these temperatures. And now when you graph them, if I were you, I would X them out as you did it so you remembered which one you did. So negative two is what we're gonna do first. And let's make sure we're counting by ones first. So one, two, three, four, five, we are, so we're good. Now we haven't done a number line going vertical yet. When we go vertical, the numbers above are positive and the numbers below zero are negative. So our first one is negative two. So we're at zero and we drop down to negative two. As you do it, label your number on there because it's gonna make it a lot easier for you. Our next one's four. So we're gonna go up to four and label. We have zero, that is already on there, so you don't have to label. We're gonna go up to two, label. We're gonna fall down to negative four and label it. We're gonna fall down to negative seven, label it. And then we're gonna fall all the way down to negative 10. We don't have to label that one because it's on there already. So we graph temperatures, I'm gonna check that off. And then which pairs of temperatures are opposites? That means if there's a four on this side, there should be a negative four over here, and there is. So we have four and negative four. And then if we see a two, there's a negative two. And that's all of them. And how do we know? because they are the opposites of each of the opposite sides of zero and they're the same distance they are the same distance from zero next question what temperature would be the opposite of negative seven so down here i'm at negative seven we go to zero seven spots up would be positive seven so positive seven, because seven is seven units away from zero. Next question, what would a point at 10 represent? So up here at 10, that would represent 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're 10 degrees above zero. Then if I'm doing the opposite of the opposite of 10, so if I had 10, the opposite of that would be negative 10. And then the opposite of that would be 10. So we go back to 10 there. 
And if you're going to write that out mathematically, we're not, never mind, we're not going to get into.